Hey, what's up, Lee Rod here. Thank you for joining me in episode 82 of Painting Masters. And if one thing you want to work on is painting people, you should tune in because this one will, uh, hopefully with some insights, will have uh, will help you improve that aspect of your work. So today we're featuring Jess Knight, an American uh, oil painter. I don't know if he defines himself as an oil painter, but from what I've seen, works mostly in oils uh, and a very skilled uh, painter when it comes to figurative work and people, but also scenes, and we will see a bit of that. So we'll get started with probably one of my favorites. Um, and what I want you to pay attention right out the gate is uh, the interesting use of colors um, for the skin tone. So that's what I always talk about. Instead of just shading with the same color, you have this specific red or this specific yellow or this specific brown or whatever. Instead of just using that and diluting it, in this case, because it's oil, it'll be diluting it with white, I guess, or with... Um, yellow, but instead of just diluting it with one color, have some variation in the color itself. And you can see this here. Uh, if we zoom in a bit on multiple locations, but if you just look at the forehead, you'll notice there's a bit of a purple kind of blue here, right? It's surrounded by a bit of brown. Uh, here you can see a bit more of that grayish blue and everything is very muted. The colors are very nuanced, which is one aspect of Jess's work that I really, really like. Um, and if we look at different areas again, here you'll catch a bit of blue and here you'll catch a bit of yellow, uh, a bit of brown and red. And it's just interesting no matter where you look at it. It's not just one color. And that's a huge contributor to the interest that a painting creates. Even if, you, if we really zoom in here, and sorry because the picture is a little pixelated. Don't get mad at me, Jess, if you're seeing this. Um, but here, this section, right, you can... You can see the nuance as it compares to this area, even as it compares to this area, from what I observe, you almost, if you focus, you'll recognize the three primary colors here, blue, yellow, and red. How pretty is that? That's one of the things I love um, about painting in general, showing that nuance of color. But in any case, we have a lot to look at, so we'll move on to the next one, but this will be a recurring theme. So this is a painting, for example, it's still work in progress, and I've been following um, uh, just as Instagram, and uh, I've seen a lot of these. I'm gonna show you a few zoom-ins in a second. So in this example, actually, there's the other way around. There's a lot of shading with the same color uh, for some areas, not for all, but like if you look at this shirt here, it's pretty much the same blue, right? Now, in the context of the full painting, and this, this again goes to show how uh, composition uh, is pretty much everything. You can have a specific thing um, that, for example, I always recommend breaking down the colors and making it interesting, right? You can have colors that are very tonally shaded, just the same blue, but the, the question is how it works in the full context of the painting. Now, this is yet to be determined. Uh, of course, I'm saying this a bit jokingly, but it's just unfinished, right? But if you do look at some other areas, you can see this nuance, especially with the lighter uh, materials here. So if you look at this a little bit of a lighter blue, if you look at uh, this here as well, um, you can tell that there's a bit of a nuance there in the colors and, and you know, but but if we don't even look at colors, if we talk about, you know, composition and, and contrast, right, this is a very nice contrast along this edge. Um, and again, it's a bit hard to judge because we're still, I'm still waiting for the finished piece, but like this is fantastic. This red for the for the ground here, the carpet, whatever it is, just looks so, so good. Um, and just like I love, you can tell like there are all of the primary colors, blue, red, yellow present, and some kind of variations in them. Uh, I think the way just mixes color is very, very nuanced um, in that he's really trying to capture the the, the hue. So you do see some variation here as this uh, lighter cloth reflects the red from the front here. So you do see a bit of that. Um, you do see a bit of the blue possibly from the ground or from the jeans here. So there is quite a lot of nuance if you actually look up close. Um, here are a few zoom ins. I just really love seeing the brush marks. You know, one of the things I really like is when I can see them, right? Kind of like a sergeant work. I can really see the brush marks. That's one thing that I prefer as much as possible. Um, and I can definitely see this in most of the paintings. Sorry about these arrows. Some of these I had to get from Instagram. Uh, now, I did want to show you a few sketches, which is fascinating. And you can immediately tell um, 
you can see the formal education. Now, it doesn't mean that every person that sketches like this went through formal education, but it's m much more likely than not they have. Um, and it just, it's, it's, it's clear, the shapes, the shadows, the core shadows, the, the reflections, the everything is just so on point. Let me show you another one. This is just amazing. Like the way the hair is portrayed, you can tell it's airy. It's just so nice. Um, uh, one more thing to have in mind is the um, lines and shapes, right? Because this is a more uh, more line, I don't want to say line-based medium, but as soon as you use charcoal, pencil, uh, graphite, you're drawing a lot of lines too. Knowing where to put the lines and where to leave the shapes a little ambiguous is a big part of it, right? And here, like for example, this is a very clear line. The line for the glasses is very clear. Uh, but here, for example, there's a very smooth transition. The details within the shadow are very vague, right? So it's making use of a lot of really well thought out planning of shapes and edges that gets this to look so neat, you know, it just looks so good. Um, Let's look at a few more. We actually have, I think, 14. Uh, so I wanted to show you this because it's interesting because you can also see the reference photo. Now, again, personally, for my style, I like breaking more the different colors. So I would probably exaggerate some other colors that aren't there, maybe, or make them up. But, you know, sometimes you just want to go for a bit of a more monochromatic look, and that's perfectly, you know, okay. Um, but you can see, I just thought it's interesting that you can see the reference and the painting side by side. And uh, obviously a very good kind of methodical process approach. And, and uh, Jess has a YouTube channel, so you may want to check it out. I will link, of course, everything down below. Uh, you can see some studies and processes. Very fascinating if you're into oils, especially. Um, so here's another one. So this one's from the website, and it's probably a fully finished painting. It's just fantastic. The thing that really is mind-boggling to me here is that control over the very dark side of the value scale especially if you look at the clothes in the lower area here it's just so good and it, mixing those super nuanced you know warms and cools and shed, you know, temperature and also values it's so nuanced getting that to look good is such a challenge sometimes that it's really incredible to see this um so yeah, and, and also of course the just the general edge control here and and the, it's very nuanced again blues here and there a bit of a blue on the reflection on the lip, just such a clever way of building things up. Um, and you know if you're seeing this and, you, and you're mind blown, a lot of people go to the place of I don't know how I can ever paint something like this, and that's actually like you can if you sit down and apply yourself you can. Uh, I really do believe this. Um, so, you, we, you know, you see the end result, but um, myself, at least, I'm like that. I see a lot of imperfections in my own work and a lot of things that people don't see when they just see the finished uh, product. Uh, this was interesting, too, because I'm not sure who's who painted the original on the left, but from what I read in the Instagram post, um, it was a study of the painting on the left with an emphasis on simplifying. And one of my favorite things to look at ever um, more rough kind of simplified uh, painting so here you see the drawing stage and then you see the finished result of the study which I think is a great this is a great exercise in and again simplifying the shapes especially breaking it down so when you look at the neck here there are all sorts of nuances and all sorts of things you know different edges different values different colors different transitions, but here it's just a simple shape. Now notice something really interesting, how we also simplify this curve here. And that's a very useful thing to do. This curve is, it just looks good. You don't have to capture this sharp, sharp bump. And that's exactly the idea, to me at least, of gesture drawing. You get the overall um, overarching motion of the line rather than the, the actual you know, jagged surface, very detailed look at, at the, which is just, I think, a great exercise because it will serve you really well in, in many situations where you just want to paint a clear message. Same with the leg here, the foot. Look at this here. 
Look at this here, right? Just genius, genius work. I absolutely love these kinds of things. Sorry, I can't credit the original one. Whether it's his, I don't believe so. Uh, just because from the caption, that's not what I got at least. Uh, here's another cool one. The reason I share it is because we we're going to look at two really good zoom ins of this one. And you'll get to see some of the nuance, especially. I don't know why. I always... The things that fascinate me are always the ones that may not be as as you know as popular or as obvious. Like the the sleeves and the cloth here is so good, I love that. And again, the the colors are very nuanced. So he really does have everything here, right? A bit of a um, kind of peachy orange here, very muted though, uh, and a bit of green there. That that's a green. That's pretty much a green brown bit of purple here, but a bit of everything really. Um, and when you're able to capture the nuance of the color so well, I find that very impressive, right? Here's the, the full thing. Um, and then if we zoom in a bit, uh, and finally, if we really zoom in, that's just fantastic. I love that. The shape design is really interesting too. Again, edges sharp, uh, um, soft, um, the, the shadow, uh, mapping is very clear, right? This, you can tell that's a shadow, that's darker, all of this side, you know, it's, it's just a very clear separation. Uh, and yeah, so I want to share with you a few quicker examples. Uh, again, I don't know much necessarily about the process of these or whether it's study or his original work. In any case, it's his painting, of course, but like, I love that. Look at all these rough kind of brush marks and all of the nuances within the color. It's so easy to look at a person and just say, okay, I see just one skin color. Just everything is the same. It's just not true. You you reflect everything off of your environment. And and sometimes you can see from underneath this the skin, so if someone's blushing, right, that's gonna be red, or you can see a vein or something. It all influences the colors. Um, it's very rare to just see a very flat kind of skin tone, very specific light and shadow conditions and it's just not as common. So this, if anything, is far more impressive to me and I really enjoy it. Not to mention, of course, again, the loose brush marks. Just really, really clever. Here's another nice example. So I, I, from what I read, this isn't meant to be a finished one, but rather a study for a more detailed finished work. But that's to me, that's beautiful. I, I love works at this stage. Um, and again, look at this just so beautiful, the color nuance, and nothing is too far off and not communicating. Everything is communicating. Um, I don't know how limited the palette is, but it's quite contained, um, which is fantastic to look at. Um, and then we have this, so this is a very impressive uh, piece of art, and I will show you, I can show you now, there is another, I think it's the stage, but it could be a preliminary kind of study. Uh, but if we go back, it does look quite similar. So I would assume it could be the actual painting. But one thing I want to direct your attention towards is, is actually the ground. Look at the level of simplification, how he creates the illusion of depth and distance. Um, the colors here, yes, the blues and yellows are clearer. And as they move out away from us, they become a little more gray. Uh, and then also the level of detail. Again, it's it's not only is it a lot of work to now just paint all of these patterns all the way to the back, it's actually counterproductive. In reality, it's very hard to perceive these farther ones as well as the closer ones. And yes, the pattern is there. It continues probably, right? Uh, if you actually look at it in real life, you will recognize this shape going all the way into the distance, but it's gonna be smaller and less nuanced. And to me, the, the better approach Personally, again, it's a matter of choice, but the better approach to me is to mimic the eye rather than reality necessarily. And the way the eye perceives these things is this way, which is just fascinating. Um, so that's what I wanted to kind of um, focus on here. Look, at it's just so nice, that gradual transition. Even the pattern here, right? Look at what happens somewhere around here. Uh, I think I forgot to include it, but there's also... Um, uh, a picture on Instagram showing the perspective lines and the planning of the drawing itself. It's not easy to get the right angle and how much smaller things become as they go back in, in distance, like how sh how sh small and how fast does this pattern become you know, smaller. Um, so it's something you may want to look into. It's beautiful. This I love it. Again, I love this stage. Love it. Um, and this is one before the last. So just super impressive with the reflected light. 
um, these blues here. And again, when you kind of zoom out a bit, so what I see here is a lot of blue, a lot of purple, and a lot of yellow. And these are all colors that just communicate so well together. They all seem uh, in great harmony. There's a lot of interesting, I guess, compositional selectiveness of, okay, I'm going to leave this empty or this side empty. The arm here is barely visible. And I do believe that's finished work. Um, it's also signed. So a lot of this is just so clever knowing once you know how to paint something detailed and, and actually accurate, now you get the freedom to choose this part's going to be a little looser. This part's going to be a little tighter. Here I want a strong punch of colors. Here I'd, I'd rather avoid it. Um, even the back here, look at this, right around here. There's something there, but it's not painted. So just a very clever way to structure things. Uh, and I, I love strong blue reflections. You know, it's something I did with the OCD painting. It's just something that I enjoy. And I do want to finish with probably one of the mo most uh, impressive ones here. Uh, this is also from the website. Just brilliant. So a couple of things. This is very, obviously, very realistic, right? Probably almost photorealistic. If I see this from afar, it looks like a photo. Um, but I appreciate how the technique shows. Um, it's, again, something I really enjoy. A couple of things that I picked up that are crazy. Like, you can tell the uh, material of this cloth. It looks a little, I don't know, I, I'm so bad at this, but it looks a little <laughs> velvety. Uh, and then you have um, the light shining through that blanket. So it's almost transparent. It's almost like something behind it is hit by light and the light is coming through the, the blanket, which is just impressive, you know? Um, and then here, look at all of these highlights. This is just brilliant. I don't know if it's like the stitching, because sometimes the stitching in these, these pieces of cloth can really reflect the light very directly. So it might be that, or it could be something else. I'm honestly not sure, but it looks so good. Um, again, not sure if this is holes in the cloth and a pattern in it, or just a, an actual, you know, knitting, or you know, I don't know how to call that. And then if we look at the pillows, again, very nuanced details, Sh cast shadow on the wall, very nuanced, once again. Um, very aware, awareness of the edges. That's the huge thing here, right? If you travel across here, this really reminds me of Vermeer uh, in the use of blues and even together with a bit of yellows, a bit of reds. Um, but but the, the way the cloth is represented and the blue and the walls that are very smooth transition, that's a Vermeer right there. Uh, it's so good, very impressive. And this is the one I wanted to save for last. Um, this one and then the big one that's still work in progress, probably my favorites. Uh, and yeah, I really hope you enjoyed this one. Seeing something a little different, you know, we don't do a lot of oils here because usually I'll have less to say in terms of technique, uh, but hopefully you got something out of it. All the best practices of composition uh, and focal points and use of color and edges and shapes and all of that good stuff. Be sure to check out Jess's work. I'm going to put again links to the Instagram, to the YouTube channel where you can check out a bunch of videos and to the website. You want to check these all out. And I will thank you so much for watching. And I will thank, of course, uh, everyone who supports me on Patreon. I'm going to run the names on the screen. I always uh, want to thank you for uh, supporting my work. Keep painting, keep creating, and I will talk to you again in the next vid real soon.